Fabregas. Now it's Iniesta. This is it. That's the goal. Spain have surely won the World Cup. We're doing it here. Cross and Dan sees tonight again. And Donovan has scored. Oh, can you believe this? Go, go, USA. The Mehdi is already pushed him out. And Jeremy, Harani, pass for the Sardar. Goal! Goal for Iran! Sardar has won the World Cup. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another World Cup group preview. For this one, we're talking Group G. That is the group between Brazil, Switzerland, Serbia, and Cameroon. And for those that don't know, Brazil, Serbia, and Switzerland were all in the same group in World Cup 2018 in Russia. Switzerland came out second after Brazil. Cameroon replaces Costa Rica in this one. For this preview, I'm joined by my good friend. We've known each other since elementary school, and we've been talking Brazilian soccer, the Seleção, since then. He's a big Brazil fan. My man, Ryan Mendez, also known on FIFA as Z9. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a big time jumper fan. Welcome, finally on screen. Welcome to the show, man. I appreciate it. So I'll let's get right happy. into. Let's get right into it, man. Brazil just announced their squad, Chiche, in his second consecutive World Cup. Since the last World Cup where Brazil lost in the quarterfinals, quarterfinals to Belgium, they won Copa America at home in 2019. That was without Neymar. And then they came up just a bit short and going back-to-back -back in the recent Copa America behind closed doors uh, in Brazil where they lost to their sworn rivals, Argentina. This is the current squad. I'm going to mention notable names, but... They're all notable names. Listen to this. Probably, in my opinion, the best squad in the tournament. Goalkeepers, Allison and Ederson from Liverpool and Man City, respectively. They also have a third keeper, but Weberton, I don't think he's going to be playing. At the back, Danilo and Danny Alves at right back. Danny Alves, 39 years old, made, over, made 124 appearances for Brazil. Center backs, Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, Eder Militao from Real Madrid. And Bremer from Juventus has only made one cap for the team. Left backs, Alex Tellez and or Tellez. How do you say it? Is it Tellez or Tellez? Uh, Tellez. Yeah. Alex Tellez, Alexandro. And then in midfield, you got Casemiro, Fred, Fabinho, Bruno Guimaraes. Um, who else we got over there? Everton Ribeiro. And then the forwards. Oh, also, Lucas Paqueta from West Ham. And then the forwards. Uh, one of the unnotable names is Pedro from Flamengo. He made two caps for Brazil. Then you got Gabriel Martinelli from Arsenal, Vinicius Jr., Anthony, Gabriel Jesus, Neymar, Richarlison, Rafinha. It is an insane squad. I think that's everybody. Let me just hear the initial reactions. Anybody you wa wanted to see on the team that didn't make it? And do you, or do you think uh, Chiche got it right? Uh, you know, I think he got it right, but I think a uh, big name got left out was Bobby Firmino. Yeah. Do you think that was a good decision to uh, have Firmino in over, uh, I'm sorry, leave Firmino out uh, as opposed to Pedro, who has only played yeah. two games for Brazil? Yeah, I think uh, Bobby Firmino definitely could have made it over Pedro. I think uh, Gabby Goal also could have made it over Pedro, but we'll see. I, don't, I mean, I doubt Pedro will even get any minutes. Yeah. So obviously it's a really stacked team. I mean, every single World Cup for Brazil, the expectation is win it or bust, like every single time. And this squad is as good of a squad as we've seen in recent times. Are they your favorite to win? Definitely. Definitely. I, okay. For no, me, yeah. there's no weakness in the squad, really. They just all around, it's a strong, strong squad. Don't see them losing. All right, so I think I, I think they're going to win as well. It's been 20 years since Brazil won the World Cup. That's their longest drought yet. Um, I think, you know, it's this is Neymar's destiny right here to lead this team to the World Cup. However, I think one of the flaws sometimes with Brazil in recent years is sometimes they can get a little too Neymar happy, like give the ball to him too much and make him work a little too much when they have such a great squad, you know. Uh, no need for him to, to do too much. Let me ask you this, man. What would you? What would be your ideal starting eleven? Because this is these are some tough choices to make. Starting with who you starting in goal? I mean, that's a decision in itself. It's a great question. Uh, you know, I definitely have to give it to Allison as the one there. How? What? What makes it make? What makes you go with Allison there? Uh, he usually just starts for Brazil. I think yeah, he's, he 
I think he's more secure in between the sticks. You feel me? Yeah, I think he's a better shot stopper. Yeah. Even though Ederson's great. I mean, Ederson would start for almost every single other team, but that's true. Yeah. Tough choice. All right. So what are we looking at at the back? I'd say Danilo at right back. I don't see them going Danny Alves. He's old. And then Marquinhos, who's like in the dead center of his prime right now, 28 years old, been on PSG for a couple years now. And then let me ask you this, because I'm obviously going to always back up Thiago Silva. Not only is he the captain, he's been insane for Chelsea these last couple of years. At his age, it's been unbelievable. Since the last Copa America, he's even revived himself again. Let me ask you this, though. Eder Militao, how's, how, how informed has he been for Real Madrid? How's he been this season? He's been great. He's been great. Yeah, okay. he actually just scored past game. But just, they just played. So, so who are you starting? Uh, my back four would actually be at left. I'd have to give it to Alexandro. Okay, and okay. the two center backs would be Thiago Silva and Marquinhos, definitely. But at right back, I would put Ida Militao. Really? Can he play out yeah. there? Yeah, he definitely can. Yeah. I think he's can played he's played a couple of games for Brazil at right back. So Okay. I definitely put him over Danilo. Okay, fair enough. That's an interesting that's an interesting choice. Yeah, but Thiago Silva, I think he for sure should start. I mean, it's it's a tournament, so he only needs to play seven games if they're lucky. And he's just been so fantastic in every facet for, for Chelsea. And obviously going forward on, on corners, he's a threat as well in the air. How about the midfield, though? What kind of formation are you running with these guys? I mean, I'd say you said they don't have any weaknesses. I'd say if I had to pick, maybe they lack creative center mids. I mean, they got Lucas Paqueta and um, Bruno Guimaraes yeah. from Newcastle. I haven't seen Bruno play that much, though. Um, nice. well, who would you go? I mean, in terms of defensive mids, I know Fred is a little bit I, – I'm not huge on Fred. You know, you're a United fan, so you can go in more depth about him. But for me, Fabinho and Casemiro are as legit as it gets. Yeah, uh, I do like Fred. You know, he gets too much hate for me, but I wouldn't start him. But yeah, my, yeah. I'd give it a pivot with Casemiro and Bruno. Okay, they both could Only play the two. six. Yeah, they both could play the six, but Bruno could push up to the eight there. All right, so who? So you're going with two wingers and a center attacking mid and a striker. Yeah, I think I give it to Vinny on the left. Rafinha on the right, Richarlison up top, and Neymar right behind in a free roll. I think okay. that's where he excels. excels. So I, I totally agree with Neymar at Cam. I agree with Vinicius as well. I have to ask, though, Richarlison. You know, he's been more common for Brazil, I feel like, in the lineup over the last couple of years. But what makes you go with him over Gabriel Jesus, who's having the season of his life right now at Arsenal? He is flying this year. Yeah, club form is a, you know, it's a huge part when it comes to getting called up and everything. But um, playing for the national team and how well you play under that coach is uh, also a huge reason. And Rich Olsen has been in serious form for Brazil over the past couple of matches for them. I think like seven goals in nine. Wow. So, yeah, I definitely give him the start over Gabriel Jesus. Do you think um, if he doesn't play that great in the first couple of games, they'll make a change? Oh, yeah, definitely. Gabriel Jesus is a great backup. Good, make serious damage. So Yeah, he's been amazing. I mean, two goals in the Copa America in which they won. Also, Brazil had 10 different goal scores at the last Copa America. So it just shows you the depth of their team. Let's talk about, before we move on to the other teams, let's talk about some other guys you know, in the attack, you know, you got um, obviously Vinicius Jr. This is gonna be this is gonna be his first World Cup. Uh, he's obviously been really great. Has really taken away any chance of Eden Hazard regaining any potential form of anything close to his old self. He's been locking down that spot. Won a Champions League last year. You think he's gonna make a big splash in in Qatar? This is his tournament. This is really his yeah. He's gonna be huge. Could what be about player Andrew? the tournament. Could player be. the tournament. Could be yeah. What about, let's see, does he qualify for young player of the tournament? He's 22 years old, born in 2000. Can you believe that? Younger than us, man. That's so crazy. Literally. So then you got Gabriel Martinelli has been, he's only played three games for Brazil, but he absolutely has earned this call up. He has been yeah. unreal for Arsenal on the wing. Absolutely electric, dribbling the ball. And this, this Brazil team, I feel like they're going to bring back that flair that we're so used to, the Joga Bonit. Yes, sir, yeah. <laughs> uh, Anthony, Manchester United, came over from Ajax. 
he uh, is an exciting young player. I mean, he's probably going to come off the bench. But you think you see him making any impact? Yeah, definitely off the bench. He's a super sub. You know, he has that flair. He has the pace. His left foot is deadly. He'll be he'll be somebody to watch out for for sure. How about Rafinha from Barcelona? How's he been doing lately? I only watched the first couple of games of the season, but Rafinha has been amazing for Barca. Been amazing for Brazil as well. He's gonna be he's gonna be a real real good player in this tournament. And you starting him? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm right. So I'm guessing you have. We obviously have Brazil winning the whole thing, both of us. But I'm guessing you got them winning the group as well. Definitely, yeah. So that brings us to the other teams. Now it's going to get a little interesting. We got Switzerland, Serbia, and Cameroon. Switzerland and Serbia. I want to remind everybody from the last World Cup. They played in a really exciting game. It was two one. Zerdan Shakiri scored a 90th minute winner for Switzerland after they were down one nil. And then Switzerland drew Brazil one one in the opening match of the tournament, which got them. Five, uh, four points. I'm pretty sure they also drew Costa Rica, so they had five points and advanced. As far as Switzerland goes, they return. By the way, I wanted to say this for Brazil. 17 of the players that were chosen for this current World Cup squad for Brazil were also involved in the last Copa America in which they lost. 17 out of 26. That's a really large number. And Switzerland, 18 of their players were at the last Euro Cup in which they finally got past the round of 16. So let's get a little background on Switzerland. They've made the last couple of tournaments. They made the knockout stage in the 2014 World Cup, the 2016 Euro Cup, the 2018 World Cup, and the 2021 Euro Cup. So four straight tournaments, they've advanced the knockout stage. They lost in the round of 16 every single time. But in the last Euro Cup, they had the incredible 3-1 comeback against France, knocked them out in penalties, and then lost in penalties to Spain. They have a very similar squad to the one we've seen throughout the years with the notable names being their longtime goalkeeper, Jan Sommer from Borussia Mönchengladbach, Ricardo Rodriguez, who has had 100 appearances for them at this point. This will be his third World Cup. Fabian Schaar from Newcastle. This will also be his third World Cup. Both of them are 30 years old. And then you've got Manuela Kanji. This will be his second World Cup. He's on Man City now, has gained valuable experience through the last four years. And then, of course, the usual suspects, Zerdan Shakiri, Granite Shaka, the captain who is having the season of his life right now for Arsenal. And then up top, you got notable names like Briel Mbolo, who was a really hyped up guy at the last World Cup, was 21. He's now 25. He's on Monaco. And Harris Seferovic, who, if you remember from the 2014 World Cup, scored the winning goal against Ecuador in the opening game. A very, very experienced squad. Yeah. What do you think of Switzerland? You, who you got second out of this group? Switzerland, Serbia, or Cameroon? Yeah, second is a toss-up between Serbia and Switzerland for me. But I'd have to give it to Serbia. But for Switzerland, yeah, Switzerland is a strong team, though. They could also get second, but Serbia is my pick. Switzerland. Surprising player that got left out to me was Kevin Mbabu. Their right back. I thought he was for sure going to get called up, but they called up four keepers instead. Surprising to me. That's Pretty a little weird, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little strange. Uh, I think Switzerland is the safe pick. I'm going to go with Switzerland just because they've made it out of the knockout. I'm sorry, they made it to the knockout in so many of these last couple of tournaments. Um, Zerdan Shakiri, it doesn't matter what club form he's in. It doesn't. It seems like every tournament that guy just puts on a show and does something ridiculous. Uh, he's 31 now, but man, it, he always seems to do really well. And then you got Dennis Sak uh, Zakaria from Chelsea, who just made his debut for them, for us, I should say. Maybe you won't. What? Debut goal as well. Yeah. Granite Shaka. I mean, the, the good thing about Granite Shaka right now is he's in at the best form he's been in going into a tournament with the season he's had with Arsenal. Um, but let's move on to Serbia, actually, because you mentioned them as the, the team you've got coming out second. I really like Serbia. Obviously, Branislav Ivanovic was one of my favorite players when I was young, the Chelsea legend. But they've got some really talented players. They came up just a little bit short at the last World Cup. And they have an interesting squad. I mean, they've got Dusan Tadic still, who's 33 years old. He's their captain. Uh, Malinkovic Savic from Lazio, who was really hyped up at the last World Cup, still over there at Lazio. And then up front is where it gets real fun. Uh, Luka Jovic from Fiorentina. Dusan Vlahovic from Juventus, only 22 years old, is really bursting onto the scene. And the vice captain, 50 goals for Serbia 
has banged in goals in the championship every time he's been there the last couple of years, and he's having a really good season right now. The main man up top, Alexander Mitrovic. These are guys to watch for. Uh, is this the reason why you got Serbia coming out of the group? Is there up is, front? Yeah, that is the reason. Though. That partnership up front, Vlahovic and Mitrovic, that's dangerous. Mitrovic is in serious form right now, and Vlahovic as well, for an underperforming Juventus side, but he's doing his thing. Any uh, doubts about the back, or you think they've got it down? Uh, I'm not too familiar with their defense, but hey, man, if they could score the goals, they can make it out. That's right. Also, and so let's, yeah. A, another strong player in the squad is Kostic. Mm -hmm, also on Juve. Yeah, also on Juve. And he's been great for them in serious form as well. There we go. And then so the last team to end it off, Cameroon. I mean, I'm always a big fan of the West African teams. Anyone that knows me knows that. Um, Samuel Eto was one of my favorite players as a kid. Cameroon's had a couple of interesting uh, last couple of years. They won the African Cup in 2017, which was huge, beating Senegal to do it um, in penalties and then winning the champ. I forget who they beat in the final. But they did make the World Cup in 2018, even after they won the African Cup. Then they played in two African Cups since then, one that Algeria won and the other one in which Senegal won. And in the one that Senegal won, they lost in the semifinals to Egypt on penalties. And Vincent Abubakar, who has been around for a little while now, he's 30 years old, scored eight goals in the tournament, which was by far the most of anybody. I think Cameroon's an exciting team. I haven't watched them in a, in a while, though. I mean... Do they have a chance to get out of this group? It's it's weird seeing a West African team finish dead last in a group because that I feel like the African teams usually finish third. But I mean, what do you think? You got think you got any any chance? A little Eric Maxime Chupa Moting action. He's been in form. He's like twelve goals, I think, in last eleven or eleven in last twelve, something like that for Bayern. Wow, wow. Yeah, he's been in serious form as well. But no, I don't think they have any chance getting out of the group. Third place, perhaps though they aren't they aren't a weak side, you know. Not at all. Teams from Africa they always play with their heart. They're super strong, so they could surprise some people and get in that third spot. If they were in USA and uh, Iran's group, they'd have a real shot. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. this group is tough. So, all right, I'm gonna get my standings here. Are mine right up there. Brazil first, Switzerland second, Serbia third, Cameroon fourth. I'm not going to lie. I really like all these teams. Like, I mean, Switzerland I'm pretty neutral on, but I, they've always been a fun, uh, good team in the tournaments. I like Serbia more than them, but I've always been a, a sucker for the West African team. So if I had to pick it my way, I would have Cameroon finish second. But um, I'm honestly rooting for Serbia to make it out over Switzerland just because they haven't made it to the knockout stage in a tournament. And I can't even remember how long. I mean, I remember them. In South Africa, they beat Germany, but they didn't make it out of the group. Um, so you're going with Serbia second, Switzerland third, Cameroon fourth? Yeah, correct. I think Serbia is a – that's my dark horse in the tournament. I think they can make it a bit far. Could okay. Some people, yeah. I like that. Um, all right, Ryan. That was a really good stuff, man. Really appreciate you coming on. And no, I, I'm, I'm definitely I'm definitely thinking we're going to check in uh, for a little post-game action after this tournament starts uh, for this man. group. Yeah, definitely. All right. All right, man. It's been an honor. Thank you, Don Dropper.